Rearrange the math to score big. Yahtzee is a great game to get your learners considering probability when making decisions. However, the individual dice rolling means students are often waiting a long time for their turn, which is a missed opportunity for them to be thinking. The game you're about to see combines the best elements of Yahtzee with bingo to ensure all of your learners are engaged in deep mathematical thought. Here's how it works. Students are given a game board in which they'll place the numbers one to 10 drawn randomly from a deck of cards or using a 10 sided dice. I prefer cards for the extra information you get. There are two board games here. I'll explain why there's two later. Every time a number is drawn, students will place it in their grid, aiming to satisfy the statements at the end of each row or column. Once placed, a number cannot be moved, which means students must carefully consider their placement. I recommend pairing students up so they share ideas and justify their choices. Where would you put this six? Some people might go here in the multiples of three. It's also an even number. And here, this one here says all the numbers are factors of the first in this row. So if we put a six here, which has a lot of factors, then this can be a six, a three, a two, or a one, any of those in there. So that might give us a good chance of scoring some points there. Before the game begins, you might take the opportunity to explicitly teach some vocabulary like product or sum or factors so that your students know how to play. And one by one, the teacher will call out the numbers that are drawn. So there's a three. And maybe we should have gone multiples of three. We'll chuck it in there now until everyone has filled their game board. So once a game board is full with the 16 numbers, you end the game and total up which of the statements you've satisfied and what points you get or don't get. The only exception to this is this one here. You will score regardless because the sum of these numbers here is equal to your score in this row. The other ones will just be either zero or what's written there, whether you satisfy or don't satisfy it. At the end of the game, I like to switch on God mode. So what we do, we use the numbers from the first game in the second game and we fold it over and use this second grid to give students the opportunity using the numbers from the first game to maximize their score. This takes all the luck out of the game and makes it purely about skill. So what is the best score you can get with these numbers? you can create all sorts of grids to cater for different abilities and content areas. And even better, you can get students to create their own grid by choosing the statements they want at the end of each row and column from a menu I've created. Now, many students might be tempted to pick four of a kind thinking about the 100 points on offer. However, they'll soon realize the chances of all four of a number coming out is very low. If you enjoyed this activity, there are plenty more free hands-on maths activities at thinksquare.com.au slash games. We're also hoping to get Martsy online in 2026 so you can play on the ThinkSquare game suite, games.thinksquare.com.au. Enjoy.